Hey Cubs, it's Mrs. Bailey. Today we're going to talk about writing a narrative. A narrative is just a story that you write. It could be a story about your real life. But over the last couple weeks, we've learned how to make our stories even better. You've learned how to show a character's feelings. When we talked about show, not tell. So instead of just telling me someone was being silly, you could show me with details in your words. You could show me by saying she's sticking her tongue out and saying, ah, Sarah tries to make her eyes as big as she can. She is jumping on one foot and flapping her arms. She is being silly. And you guys practice that with a couple different emotions. Instead of just telling how you feel, you are using words to show what the character was doing to show their emotion. We've also learned how to build a sentence, how to take one simple sentence like I saw a baby and add lots of details by asking ourselves questions like who, where, how, why, and what. So instead of just saying, I saw a baby, I could really build that sentence and say, I saw a tired baby crying loudly at the grocery store because he dropped his pacifier on the ground. That is so much better with all of that detail. Then last week, we learned how to make great beginnings to a story. Instead of just saying, one day I went to the beach, we went to the lake, I went to school, we learned how you could write a great beginning by describing the setting, using a sound, having a character start at the very be talking at the very beginning, or even starting with action words or some great verbs. So all of these pieces that you've learned over the last three weeks are really going to help your stories be even better. So now it's time to put all of those new writing skills together to write your own story. This is what your story must have. You can choose the topic. It could be something that you've done recently, something you've done long ago. It could even be one that you make up in your head. But it has to have a great beginning using one of the new beginnings we've learned. It must have at least one sentence that shows, not tells, how a character feels. And it has to have at least one sentence that is so full of details, your reader is going to be very impressed. Now, when you're writing a story, we also want you to remember everything else you learned about writing when we were still in school. Your story also must have capitals for every single sentence. Correct punctuation at the end of sentences. Make sure you don't have any run-ons, sentences that just keep going, 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 and never stop. You also must have capitals for names of people or places. Your handwriting must be neat, and you must have spaces between your words. Your story must have a beginning, middle, and end. And make sure you add plenty of details to make it interesting. So by the end of the week, Make sure you share your story with your teacher by reading it aloud to her on Google Meet. Remember, she'll be looking for all those things your story must have. It must have a great beginning. It must have at least one sentence where you show how a character's feeling with detail. And it must have a sentence that has great details in it. Not to mention everything else we've learned about writers in second grade. Good luck, Cubs. Have fun writing.